So hi and welcome to this uh, small mini sort of thing uh, of Land Rovers Live. As always, I'm Matt and of late we've been running a competition which runs for another three days. So if you want to enter that, which you do, click on the link below and make sure you enter. I think it's this Thursday, the 26th of March. We are out of time for that. And part of entering the competition means that you guys help us out with some feedback on the show and by filling in our 2015 survey. Many thanks to those of you who have done it. And it's well brought to our attention a few things that we should probably address. Uh, we've had a ton of feature ideas, but the one we're going to look at today is a request that we've had for quite a few times and even before this uh, competition for what kit do we use? A lot of you want to go out and film your own laning and pay and play day events and things of that ilk. Uh, and we get asked what equipment we use. We're going to show you what equipment we use now. Uh, not all of it's for you, some of it may be, some of it isn't. Uh, but we'll see if we can go through some of the pros and cons of it. So surrounding me here is some of the kits that we use. And I've just picked out some key bits and pieces so to give you a bit of a, a flavour of, of what we do. Um, when we first started the show, we used a little Sony camera called the NX30, which sadly we've broken two of them now, so we don't use them anymore. However, I can really recommend that camera, and the way it's different to all other cameras that you'll see is the actual lens element has a gyro on it, so what that means, it stabilises itself. Really great camera. I did a review of it for a different show quite a while ago, and we'll post a link of that here. Really good if you're out green laning or want to get footage whilst you're on the go in the vehicle. We haven't got that now, so we use this bit of kit, but I'll get to that a little bit later. So we'll start from the smallest going up to the biggest in terms of what we use on Land Rovers Live. So throughout the shows, we do various different things and the stuff we're filming now doesn't require anything too portable or crash proof or anything. But where we do go out and get the vehicles muddy and whatever, we use little action cameras. Um, now these things, there are GoPros available, we use GoPros and these movie cameras. Uh, they're all much of a much just really, the GoPro is clearly the better camera because the image it can produce is quite a bit nicer. But for most things, particularly for online stuff or recording to show to your friends, these things are pretty good. They come in at, well, I think they start at about £60, £70 pound, and this particular one is about £150. Pound. Um, but there's a little very wide angle lens so you can put it very close to something and still see a huge amount. The downside to this type of camera is that there really aren't very many controls on it. It's very small to tell what's going on because there aren't very many buttons. And the image is so distorted that for things like this that we're shooting now, we'd see the entire room and with curvy edges. Now whilst that's all well and good for skateboard videos, for most things it's not ideal. But if we get, lose one of these, drop it in the river, smash it up, it's not the end of the world. We wouldn't like to, but you can. They also come generally with these cases, which are waterproof, because uh, the actual unit itself is not waterproof. You do need the case, which generally will come with it. Uh, they're scratch-proof. You can always change the lenses on the front, so we get through quite a few of these. And they're pretty good, solid, reliable bits of kit. Where they do suffer and this is the same across the board with whether you're using your cell phones or any of these action cameras, is that the optics and the sensor particularly is not the best quality. So lots of vibration and you'll see something called rolling shutter. We'll put an example of that on the, on the screen, but what it effectively does is make your videos look like jelly. There's not a huge amount you can do with it and some edit systems can fix it, but it's, you know, you're better off without it in the first place. So that's the action cams. We use a whole load of those. Whenever you get them, by the way, I can't recommend enough. You can never have enough little mounts. We have helmet mounts, suction mounts, clip-on mounts, stick-on mounts, every conceivable type of mount that you can get because we use them all for, all for different things. That's the action cams. Next up we use them, we started the show with, was the Canon 7Ds. This is the DSLR stills camera, but it also takes pretty good video. You can, this particular one has been replaced now, but uh, we use it a lot. The 7D in particular, because it's absolutely bulletproof. This one has been crashed from a remote control helicopter before uh, and not been looked after all that well. But a really great camera. Second hand, you can pick these up for just a few hundred pounds now. Um, and it's still a good, reliable workhorse for us. Again, it does have its limitations. Like the action cam, 
there it does suffer from this jelly effect and rolling shutter. It's pretty heavy, so it won't be mounted to a small suction mount. You'll need quite a big mount if you want to stick that onto your car. Also, the camera itself, whilst it's pretty good, it's only as good as the lens that you put on it, and there are limited audio recording options. But um, as a good base start point to upgrade from an action cam as your main camera, 7D, 550D, and Nikon do a whole bunch of variants as well, that's a pretty good camera to go for. We still use it occasionally. Now, we use two other types of cameras as well for the majority of Land Rover's live filming. One of them I don't have to hand here because they're out shooting, but they're the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. This camera is a tiny, very small form factor, looks like a pocket, well, pocket camera. Um, we have put all sorts of adapters on these to get some really interesting bits and pieces. Now, the, the quality of the image that comes off of the camera is second to none. It's fantastic. It also allows us to put cinema lenses on and things to do some slightly more cinematic stuff. So some of the, the footage that you may have seen in our Evoke review a little while ago, that was done on the pocket cinema camera. And whenever we want to do something a little bit special, that's what we'll use. It also does have the advantage of its very small form factor. We can put a little lens on it and get into some quite sneaky places with it on dashboard mounted. Uh, so that's good. We'll put some images on the screen of what that camera looks like. But the main one that we use most of the time, which I have here, and we have a few of these, is the Canon C100. Uh, this is not a particularly expensive camera, but compared to a, an action cam, it, it is a big step up in price. But it gives us, well, absolutely everything that we'd, we'd need on Land Rover's Live. We've taken the lenses that we used on our 70 and added to that, and we can bolt those straight onto the C100. So if any of you out there have got Canon lenses from stills cameras, it's all the same stuff. It fits straight on here. Now, the C100, I could do a full camera review of it, but I'll just tell you what it does for us. What it gives us is a really nice looking image that's very usable. It also records onto SD cards. And chiefly, it's got proper audio inputs. So on the side here, we can put various different microphones in there, which we'll show you in a bit what we use. Most cameras up until this point will have pretty rubbish audio. Um, you can use external audio recorders and all the rest of it, but for us, we want it all in one go because on any given shoot, we'll take out two or three of these at a time. It offers all of the controls you'd expect from a very high-end camcorder and where, where you're saving on the money, really, is there are some build quality issues. It's not, you, you couldn't drop this down a flight of stairs and it'd be okay. Um, but the battery lasts most of the day and they're fantastic cameras. So that, on Land Rover's Live, is our main staple camera. Attached to those I mentioned, we have Canon lenses and we, we keep as many of these as possible. If you're getting into filmmaking, it's worth spending good money on lenses. They don't have to be brand new, but lenses won't really devalue in, in price. Your camera bodies will become obsolete, but lenses will always hold their value, more or less. So buying second-hand lenses, good ones, is a, is a good idea. Um, there's arguments to say whether you should use zoom lenses or, or prime lenses, fixed focus, focal length lenses. We use zooms for most things. We do have some prime lenses as well, but for Land Rover stuff, it's just not very practical. So, so a good lens that zooms in and out quite a long way, that's what we're after. And we have maybe eight different lenses for different sorts of things. Now, we mentioned earlier about the Sony NX30 being a go-to camera because it's stabilized and none of the other cameras do. So we've got all these cameras with no way to keep them stabilized. So our main way of doing that is to we sit it on a tripod, as this particular camera is now, uh, or we go handheld, which you know, can yield different results. It's as good as the operator. Uh, but we do have this. Now, this might be new to, to many of you out there. It's a fairly new premise. But what it is, it's a camera stabiliser where the camera mounts on here, and through three axis of travel, it will hold a camera still. For Land Rover stuff, it's imperative. When we're hanging out in the back of the truck filming something, then the vibrations or, well, just general movement that you see in a lot of things will disappear with this bit of kit. So that's the DJI Ronin, and we use it to stabilise most of the shots that we have. It's a great bit of kit, uh, but you need a good back for it. We mentioned earlier about sound recording and why we use the C100 as uh, a camera, because it has all the audio inputs. We do need to record quite a bit of sound. Currently, I'm on a radio mic, and we have a few of these. These are crazy expensive for what they are, but essentially it's a tiny little microphone which attaches wirelessly 
to the camera. So the camera end goes there, and that's the bit that attaches to me. You should just be able to see it here, uh, and chances are I'll always be wearing one when you see it. When we're interviewing other people, it may be that they don't want to be mic'd up, can't be mic'd up, or logistically it's a bit of a nightmare. So the other thing that we use is a stick mic. Uh, this particular one's a Sennheiser stick mic on a big boom pole. You'll have seen this on most TV programs. So the one that we opt for is the Sennheiser mic. There are various different ones. This is the ME16 or 116, something like that. And for Land Rover stuff, because we're outside most of the time, we need this, the dead cat on the end. This will stop a lot of wind noise. Without it, you probably wouldn't hear anything anyway. Attached to a good boom pole, and that's what we give to our sound man. So most of the sound you see or shadows that you see in set will be from this chap. Now, that's pretty well it. We do keep a whole load of other bits and pieces, but to be honest, we think you'd find that a bit boring. But the main stuff, the cameras that we use and the sound kit that we use, that's pretty well it. If you've got any other questions about the kit that we use or want recommendations or, or just some settings, do let us know. The comments box is below. And as always, to see how we use these cameras, you can check out any one of our episodes and we'll put a few of our favourites on the screen for you. And we'll see you next time.